In this video, we'll be seeing about cephalocaudal gradient of growth and Scammon's curve. They come at the topic of growth and development in orthodontics. So the human body, they do not show a uniform growth. Like each part will grow at a different time and the amount of their growth will vary or the extent to which they grow will vary and also the rate of growth will be also changing. So this we call it as differential growth and the differential growth is expressed through cephalocaudal gradient of growth and Scammon's growth curve. First coming to cephalocaudal growth. So the word cephalo means it relates to the head and caudal means trunk portion. Gradient meaning is it will be showing the change which is occurring from one point to another. So in cephalocaudal gradient we will be show, seeing how there is change in proportion of growth from head to toe region. So there is increased axis of growth from head to toe and this is called a cephalocaudal gradient of growth. And this diagram is something which will be given in your textbooks. Here, these two are the growth of a fetus in intrauterine life and this is during birth and they three are the growth of a child till an adult. So first during intrauterine life, the head size will be almost about 50 percentage or about half will be occupied, half of the body will be occupied by the head and the cranium portion part will be well developed and the limbs part or the trunk portion will be not well developed and they will be primitive. Now as the fetus grows, the proportion of the head size will be gradually reducing and the limbs will be starting to grow. Now as it reaches the birth, in the birth we can see as the growth continues and when you are reaching the birth size the head size will be almost about 30 percentage or 25 percentage it will be about 25 to 30 percentage that is about 1 by fourth of the size will be occupied by the head and the limbs have started to develop and as this child grows the growth of the limbs will be more faster. So, the percentage of the head has gradually reduced from 50 to 30 percentage. It has become about 1 by 4. Now, as this pattern continues and as the child grows, so this diagram is something of 2 years and then 12 years. And now, finally, when this reaches the adult size or about 25 years of age, during the adult size, we can see the size of the head has become about 12 percentage that is about 1 by 8 so it is about 1 by 8 initially the head was about 1 by 2 and finally it has become about 1 by 8 from 50 percentage it has gradually reduced the proportion of the head size has reduced to 12 percentage and in an adult size the limbs or the legs are occupying about 50 percentage that is about 1 by 2 so the limbs have occupied the most of the position and head has become only a part. So this change which we can see in the proportion of size of head and toe that we call it as cephalocaudal gradient. So initially head was occupying 50 percentage that is half of the size of the body and finally when reaching the adult size the limbs are occupying the 50 percentage and head has occupied only about 12 percentage or 1 by 8 of the total body proportion. This change in the pattern is called as cephalocaudal growth. This change in the pattern is because of the cephalocaudal gradient of growth which we can see. Now what is the cephalocaudal gradient of growth important in face? How is it important in the face region we have to see. So in face the cranium or the skull part is well developed whereas the jaw or the face uh, in the jaw portion is less developed. When compared to skull, skull will be much developed and jaws or the face will be less developed. Now we have maxilla and mandible. So the nasomaxillary complex or the maxilla is something which is closer to the brain. And mandible is a li little bit far from the brain. So first maxillas, it is being closer to the 
brain or the head will be growing at a faster rate it will be growing much faster and the growth will be also completing at a faster time that is almost about 7 to 8 years of age you can see that the maxillary growth will be stopped now coming to mandible mandible being far away from the head portion a bit far than maxilla from the head or from the cranium mandible will be growing at a slower rate when comparing to maxilla and growth of the mandible will be completed only about 18 to 20 years of age so this is the importance of cephalocaudal growth in face region next we'll be seeing about the scammons growth curve so the scammons growth curve was given by richard everingham scammon the human body mainly has four major tissues first it is neural tissue lymphatic tissues somatic or general tissue and last genital or sexual tissues so scammon has plotted this growth of these tissues at each age into a curve. In x-axis we have the age groups and in y-axis we have the percentage of postnatal growth or percentage of adult size how much the tissues will reach we can see. First we will be seeing about the neural tissues. So the neural tissues are main components of the central and the peripheral nervous system and they have the main cells that is neurons they have a specialized cells called neurons so these tissues complete their growth almost about six to seven years after six to seven years of age they have no growth so they will be growing to their maximum size at about six to seven years of age and there will be no growth after that second lymphatic lymphoid tissues or the lymphatic tissues so these tissues will be reaching their maximum size that is almost about 200 percentage of the adult size that they will reach during the late childhood and after puberty or when the genital tissues start growing they will be undergoing regression so the lymphatic tissues are very important because they are the ones which will be protecting us from the infections and these tissues include example thymus or tonsils so these thymus and tonsils will be in a larger size during the late childhood and after puberty we can see that there will be shrinkage of these tissues so they will be having a peak growth and they will reach their maximum size during the late childhood and after puberty they will be undergoing regression or when the genital tissues start growing there will be regression of the lymphoid tissues now coming to the somatic tissues or general tissues so somatic tissues they follow a sigmoid shaped curve or a s shaped curve initially there will be slowing of growth during the childhood and then there will be acceleration during puberty so initially there will be slowing of growth and after puberty we can see there will be an acceleration of the growth now coming to the genital tissues so genital tissues they are having a negligible growth till puberty because that's a stage where the secondary sexual characters will be starting to develop so they will show a negligible growth till puberty and after puberty they will be reaching the peak So this is the genital tissues, general tissues which follow a S-shaped curve and neural tissues they complete their growth by 6 to 7 years of age and lymphoid tissues which attain the maximum size of about 200 percentage and then after puberty they undergo regression. Now what is the importance of this Kamen's curve in the face region? So the maxilla follows the neural growth pattern and Mandible follows the somatic or general tissues growth pattern. So maxilla will be completing their growth by 6 to 7 years of age 
and mandible will be completing their growth at a later age that is about 18 to 20 years of age so when you have to correct any malocclusions or any growth modification treatment to be done in maxilla we have to do it at an earlier age interruption of maxillary skeletal corrections should be done at an earlier age whereas mandible we, we can go for skeletal corrections even at a later age so comparing mandible and maxilla maxilla completes their growth at an earlier age group so that's all about cephalocaudal gradient of growth and scammon's curve in orthodontics see you again in another video in another topic thank you